I did not think this was a real story. I have to admit. I mean, I am... Uh, when I first saw the tweet, I thought it was NBA Centel. Because Centel likes to send out all these... Uh, these different... Um, uh, like, tweets. Like, Centel is like a satire like account. Like, parody account. And so, when I saw it, I was like... The story about Bronny James. Bronny James being uh, the Lakers are saying that he's going to be a part-time G League player and that uh, he's only going to play the G League home games. And this was coming from Brian Windhorse, who was on a uh, podcast. And he said, I think it's actually detrimental to him. I don't think that, I don't like it. I don't know whose idea it was, but obviously the Lakers are fine with it. They're doing it. And he said uh, he think that they're going too far. He doesn't think it benefits Bronny. He doesn't think it benefits the South Bay Lakers. And he doesn't think it benefits LeBron at this point. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the LeBron part, who really cares, right? I mean, it's just, I know it's his son and all, but. Maybe he's meaning it doesn't benefit LeBron because LeBron wants to play with him as much as possible. And if you're moving him up and down South Bay to the Lakers, you know, he doesn't really have time to spend with LeBron. I don't know. Maybe he's talking about that from a parental standpoint. But is he really still being parental to LeBron at this while he's on the Lakers? Eh, maybe, maybe, who knows. But, uh, yeah, th th this is a crazy story. It's like... It's, it continues to show you how crazy this whole thing has been with the Lakers and LeBron James and and Bronny James, right? And you almost you almost kind of got to you almost it's hard to say you feel sorry for someone who's like a kid of a rich billionaire, but from a basketball standpoint, not from a personal life or like that's what we have to separate. Like, because I know when people every time when someone gives a criticism. Or an opinion about LeBron specifically, people jump into the how could you hate on the guy or how could you say anything negative or any or critique him? He's a great father. He built a school. All blah blah blah. You can't say anything negative about him on the basketball court or basketball wise because of all this stuff he does off the court. But those things are not relevant to basketball or on the court. The only thing that makes it relevant is that he's been able to achieve wealth to do those things okay good for him but we're talking about as far as basketball is related but the some of the lebron fans don't understand that they jump out the window they try to attack you so the same rules apply here for Bronny, right it's like in theory i'm not really feeling sorry for him as like Bronny james the son of lebron it's almost like you're feeling sorry for him because, from a basketball standpoint, because, like, okay, the guy need, needs to develop his game. He had a bit of a setback, obviously, going to USC and then having the, uh, the heart thing that happened to him, the cardiac arrest, and he still gets drafted. No, we could believe it's nepotism, a little nepotism, whatever you want to say. He's, he's in the NBA, and... He now he's being bounced back and forth. He's gonna play at South Bay, then he's gonna play with the Lakers home game. It's just a lot going on there. And I'm wondering how Bronny really feels about it. Like I know he wants to play with his dad. He's probably excited to be on the team with his dad. Or is he? I don't know, because I don't know Bronny personally. But from the from the growth of his uh from a basketball standpoint, he can't really be uh that um it can't be that good for him. And, and Winning Horse makes a good point. And, like, at this point, like, if, even if you're Bronny, you're like, look, you play with your dad. If I was Bronny personally, now I, I'm saying this as somebody who's not a billionaire or rich, but I would be like, hey, let me play, stay in the South Bay Lakers. I'll improve my game, play. Even if I play, like, most of the season, bring me back up at the All-Star break, right? Or anything like that. Like, all this back and forth, I would be like, no. <clears throat> Either bring, have me up here or keep me down there. 
and I would probably be better for him long term if he's down there. Let him play out the year, you know. And if he looks that great down there after like half the season, you want to bring him up after the All Star break? Fine. But I think what's going on here is the Lakers are trying to split split the baby with the bathwater, right? It was like, is that the same? I don't even. Know. <laughs> They're trying to do, you know, because they know. When he's down there, they sell out, right? They have big crowds. <coughs> so they're trying to anticipate sell out all the home games. So why is only playing all home games, right, for the South Bay Lakers? They want to get that home crowd, that home money, and that's it. And then if he's on the road on the Laker roster, potentially you get a chance to see Bronny and LeBron play. Basketball fans around the country probably are looking at that like, oh, shit, I got to be in the building for that. Like, especially if you're, like, a basketball fan, that's history. Every time he steps on a new court, especially for the first half of the year at least, there's a good chance that that, that arena is going to be making history with Bronny and LeBron on the court at the same time. Fans may show up. It's going to be a packed arena, you know, stuff like that. So it seems like it's more of a business decision than a personnel decision, and they're trying to split it. They're trying to do two at the same time. They're trying to have their kick it eat it too, Right? That's how it looks from the outside. Like I said, we don't know what's happening on the inside. Maybe Bronny's thrilled with this uh, setup. Maybe he's okay with it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but Winhorst said that he says it's not. it doesn't benefit LeBron at this point. But is LeBron the one that's demanding this scenario? If he is, now I will say this. If, if this is all LeBron's doing, then he's wrong for this. But I don't know if that's the case, right? Because why would LeBron care if South Bay Lakers have sellout games? I, I, I'm i leaning towards more of the business decision the Lakers are trying to split the baby. Maybe they had a little talk with LeBron. Maybe they decided this is what we're going to do so they can get it both ways. And you're probably saying, why would the Lakers care about selling out South Bay? They're already worth billions of dollars. They're rich. Who knows what the mindset of these wealthy business owners in the league? They don't care. They want to make every penny they can make, right? They want to sell every jersey they can sell. Yes, they, they're worth billions and billions of dollars, but who cares? It's all about pride in, in the million, billionaire club. They want to say, hey, I, I can sell out. I can turn a profit. I can make money. You don't stop wanting to make money when you become a billionaire, right? That, that's just not how it works. You always want to make money. Regardless, you know, it doesn't matter. Every dollar is a dollar. And um, so so, so I'm very well aware that the Lakers, Genie Bustin, want to sell out. They want to sell tickets in the G League. They want to sell out those games. And um, But I, I just think it's wild that this setup is even happening. Like, this is where we're at in the NBA. Favoritism. The league is soft. It's run pretty much by, it's on autopilot at this point, uh, right? That's just how it is. You got star players in the league, low managing. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I don't know. I think this Bronny story is just crazy. It's just another chapter in the wild, wild, wild circus in the NBA. Let me know what you think.